Hello everybody and welcome to a new series in Air Tycoon. Uh, this series is going to be half tutorial, half let's play. So basically I'm going to try and start this from the beginning so even a new player could understand. Uh, but at the same time, I'm going to be kind of playing and showing you guys what I'm doing. So half let's play, half tutorial. So um, this is Air Tycoon Online. Um, basically the objective of this game is to achieve a high value which you do by achieving a high profit um both of them easier said than done but not hard at all, all. so the most important thing is as being an airtime airline simulator is obviously your airplanes now uh, when choosing your airplanes um you're also gonna have to consider your hub now i don't know where you chose your hub but the most important thing when choosing your hub and as you guys can see i have chosen london here um, which is my favorite hub, and I recommend you guys choose it too, um, is the business and tour numbers. So here are the business and tour numbers. Um, uh, they basically show you how much demand the city has, and the entire like way that the number of passengers on a route is decided is basically just determined by the business and tour numbers. The bigger the business and tour numbers, the more bigger planes you will be able to fill. Um, so London being 450 and 450 in both business and tour, these two numbers, um, is an exceptionally large city. So is Chicago, so is New York, um, so is LAX. There's plenty of other big cities around the world. Um, those four are the biggest, uh, Beijing, Shanghai, Tokyo, Seoul, and Guangzhou. And Singapore are cities which in size which follow closely behind, which are all great hubs. And then followed by a lot of these European cities, um, which all make great, great hubs. But the bigger cities are the easiest. Now, once you've chosen your hub, you want to pick what airplanes you want to use. Now, in the beginning of the game, there's not a lot of choice, so it's not a hard choice. Now, what's important when deciding planes is the range. Uh, this number here, everybody should kind of understand that. The fuel efficiency, which is not too important at the beginning, but grows massively in importance uh, once you pass the year 2000. Um, and the satisfaction number. Now, the satisfaction number is kind of not a very well understood concept, but the higher the satisfaction number, the more passengers your plane will attract, even if it has the same number of seats and the same price. Um, so higher satisfaction lets you high charge higher prices. And more or less guarantees your plane will be closer to as full as it can be. So my favorite planes are the 707s and DC-8s because they have the highest satisfaction numbers, good fuel economy, and most importantly, a high range also. Now the DC-811 has the highest range, so some routes I'm going to need to use that. And then followed by the 707-320B, which has, whoops, I just dropped my phone, um, which has a high satisfaction um, and decent fuel economy and also a high speed, but the speed is not too important uh, But you might want to keep an eye on that. There's some propeller planes like the Lockheed Super Constellation, which has an extremely large long range um, But unfortunately the Lockheed Super Constellation extremely is lacking in speed um, to the point where it actually matters. Now, should I buy one of these? <laughs> I'm just thinking uh, to myself. I'm not gonna buy one right now on camera um, so yeah, so once you have bought your planes, so I don't know, I recommend these planes. If you want to do short haul routes, um, the best plane is probably the Caravel 1, uh, and the Tupolev if you're stingy, uh, and need the extra size and range, but, uh, go with the Caravel 1 otherwise. Uh, the Russian planes have their place, um, but... The cheapness that they offer, being cheaper, is not does not usually offset um, the poor satisfaction, fuel economy, and other options. But sometimes when you just don't have enough money or you need the extra range, for example, for there's a shorter period of time where the Aleutian 62M is the longest range plane, um, which is still cheap, then you might want to use some of those. But yeah. On to the next most important thing is choosing your routes. Um, when choosing your routes, you're going to want to pick the biggest cities within range. Now, I've noticed when I immediately alerted that the bigger nearby cities, Madrid, Barcelona, Rome, 
Athens and Istanbul already have routes on them. And if I take a look, I can see there's two companies running routes. Now, if I became the third company, and I can already see one of these guys, this little chair symbol here is the load factor. Uh, one of these guys isn't full. Joseph Wings, that guy's empty. So I can tell, or 79% is not empty, but it's not full. And you want your airplanes to be full. And basically what that tells me is this route, if I added another plane, wouldn't make very much money. Um, same with a route like Rome. Um, I can see the first guy's full. And then two guys are running on less than 50% load factor. If I added another plane, it would likely be mostly empty. But however, London to New York, for example, I noticed there's only one other guy. Now, there might eventually be a lot more guys, so a lot of more competitors. Does that mean um, I might want to consider not making this route? Maybe, but right now I could immediately tell that, first of all, his satisfaction is very poor, which makes him vulnerable to competition. Uh, the second thing is his plane was 100% full. Uh, at least at the time I made the route, so I'm sure I could add another one, and well, my plane isn't quite full yet. Um, but your routes will start off not making too much money, and then they'll make more and more per turn until they level out. Um, and my routes are only one turn old, so. Um, yeah, they're, they're not even making close to the maximum amount of money they will be making uh, in a few turns time. Now, what pricing do you want to set? Now, if you want to make the most money possible... Uh, you're going to want to make sure when the rear route is brand new, the price is low, something like this, and then Brett gradually bring it up. Um, but because I'm going to go to sleep soon, I'm just going to set the price to the final price. And I think the final price for long range route should be 1.3. Um, you charge any more and you'll very quickly lose load factor for a very small increase in profit. Sometimes you can make more, but 1.3 in general uh, is a very efficient number for how much you can charge and still make a lot of money. Um, so basically the routes I've made, as you can see, are just anything within range and the biggest cities I could find in range with either no competition um, or only some competition. So uh, Washington had no competition, so I just made that route. It's still a big city. Chicago had competition, but it was only one guy and he wasn't very good. And not only was he not very good, uh, I felt like um, like both both these planes are 100%, you can see. So it's very easy to compete uh, with these people. And so I am uh, going to make Denver. I made Denver. These guys are out of range, so I'll eventually get to them. Um, but I'm going to have to wait for a slightly longer range aircraft. Um, or I could use a super constellation. Uh, but no. Um, so yeah, that's the basics. Um, you just pick the routes with the biggest numbers and connect them up, basically. Uh, you'll eventually learn where all the cities with the biggest numbers are. I, I, I know because I've played this game so many times. I basically could name, you can name me any of these cities and I could tell you approximately how big it was. Um, yeah, I play this game too much. But um, on the other note, I just want to mention one more important thing is learning to make stopover routes. Stopover routes are probably the most broken and um, it's not hard to understand, but extremely profitable game mechanics there is. And basically what a stopover route is, is instead of flying directly to one place with one plane, every time you fly from one place, say uh, Kansas City, then to London. So for example, Kansas City, you'd fly to London and then you'd stop over in London and then connect on to some other city. I don't have a plane right now, but say this. And you go ahead and click the passenger route and open that up. Now, um, once you've made that, the effect it basically has on your air on the route is it makes it as if the route has is being flown by a smaller plane. Why is that a good thing? Is because a smaller plane is easier to fill. And when a plane is at 100% of its load factor or extremely high percent, um, it's making about as much money as that plane can possibly make. And when you're doing that, your company is going to grow extremely quickly. Um, and that's what we want, of course. Um, and then a just side note kind of thing is you always want to run max schedules. It's very rare that people do not do this anymore. Um because the game advises you to run as many schedules as you can. 
Um, but I can find still find examples of people who don't run max schedules. For example, like this guy, only one schedule a week. Now, think about it. If you only ran one schedule a week, that's like flying between London and Paris. Probably takes around an hour. Um, and then from Paris to London back, probably in another hour. And then the plane just sits there for the rest of the week, not doing anything, while still costing you money. Um, which is no good. Which is why you want to run max schedules. If you flew it 33 times, you could make 33 times the profit. Yes, some of the expenses like fuel would be multiplied by 33 times too. Um, but 33 times the profit is definitely also a much better thing, which obviously outweighs just a few costs, which scale put per flight. Um, anyways, uh, with that aside, there's not really too much more I can cover in this episode. Um, conveniently, the turn is passing, so we can go ahead and just check out how my company is doing uh, in the next episode. This episode's more tutorial than usual because a lot of people watch the first episode of a series. Um, and I just kind of want to make sure that anyone new or old who's watching this episode kind of has a good idea of uh, how they can start their airline if they're starting in 19, uh, near 1960. Um, I prefer starting near 1970, but my friend who well, I'm playing with this this round, um, let's see if I can find this company. Um, here he is, Majestic Air, Flying Abbeys. Uh, this guy's my friend, and he does not like starting in congested worlds. So I kind of respected his wishes, basically, and said, all right, dude, uh, let's start in an older world where you feel more comfortable. What the frick? Somebody is competing with me on this route. Uh, wait, what is this guy doing? One schedule a week? What are you doing, man? Um, see, not too concerned about that. Uh, as you can see, my better routes now are making 3k a week, and these will pick up over time. Um, yeah, this net profit will increase more. Uh, yeah, everything's going fine and dandy. Also, you can, guys can clearly see how much better the 707 320s are than the DC 11s, and that's the different satisfaction makes. It's not just the size of the route, the satisfaction plays a role too. And that's something I really didn't realize until quite recently. So even though it's such a simple idea, um, I really didn't notice until now. And because, you know, this has been a really, really short episode, I think why not we pick another aircraft and see if we can schedule it on camera. Now, I have a problem is I do not have a single aircraft which has the range I need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to schedule a short-range route. So let's go find a short-range route we want to make. Um, so, no big cities cash in my mind yet. I see Ankara, but it's a bit too far. Uh, Gdansk, Hamburg. Hamburg is a very nice city. It's not too close. Uh, cities which are too close, like, uh, for example, Frankfurt and Paris, um, don't make very much money, but a, a route at the range of Hamburg will make quite a bit of money so what we can go ahead and do is re not request the slots because there are none <laughs> that's not something i expected uh yeah unfortunately my airport is full so i won't won't be running max schedules but i think this is worth it nevertheless we can go ahead and order a caravel one you always want to use minimum seat pitch this is very important i forgot to mention this but even if you don't do this You'll still make money, just less. Jeez, <laughs> um, I really forgot. Maybe I should leave a caption or some shit. Uh, yeah, because I mentioned satisfaction is important, but I forgot to say <laughs> seat pitch is important too. So, yeah, maybe maybe I'll leave, I'll leave it in the description. So, uh, what else do we need? We need Caravel, and we need at least... DC-11, let's see if the game will let us, very nice, it lets us, um, we can go ahead and normal order this DC-11, and we can go ahead and put that on route, uh, now I need to leave some slots, I know we only have 18, and I still need to leave some, uh, and we can go ahead and make a preset for a short flight i mean a short flight doesn't need great meal service of course uh and we can select a few of these amenities uh, making 18 percent let's go ahead and select that and we'll go ahead and open that route 
perfect. And then with the remaining slots and this DC-8, uh, here's what I wanted to do. is I needed to make a route to LA. Um, now, this is for more experienced players. So you'll eventually need to open a new hub. And I need to start investing in LA. And in order to do that, I need to make a route there. So, if we go ahead and do this, we should be able to open a route to LA by flying through Miami, giving us the range to reach LA um, this early on in the game without using any of my credits, my precious credits from coming in second uh, in the last game world I played. Uh, so, let's go ahead and make this route. Oh, that's five schedules a week. So, okay, wait, let's, let's just go ahead and make it, hold up, five schedules a week, so the long half of the route will need this service, and then this half of the route will use this service, slightly cheaper one, and perfect, we now have a flight to Los Angeles, and we'll go ahead and set the prices right, so um, let's go ahead and decrease this to 13 schedules a week. And let's go ahead and increase this to five schedules a week. And we'll go ahead and universally set the prices to 1.3. Because I believe, of course, that is the best price. So anyways, guys, with that in mind, that's basically all I wanted to do this episode. Um, yeah, Next episode, we'll be doing who knows what. But hopefully you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully you guys learned something. And if you have any feedback, please leave a comment. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. See you guys next time.